In this video, you're going to learn how to create this health bar in Sandbox. Starting with the default empty game project here, the first thing we're going to do is add a roots panel to our game. So we're going to go over to our project, the solution explorer, add new item, and we're going to use razor for this. Let's call it hud.razor. And to make this a root panel, we're going to inherit sandbox.ui.root panel. We're going to add some text in here just to make sure that it's working. We're going to go back to our game in the constructor of the game. If we are a client, create a new instance of this HUD. Now let's go back to our game. It's not going to show up now because we need to restart. We press the restart button in the launcher or execute the restart command in the console. As soon as this is finished, we should see the test text in the top left of our screen. Now let's create a health bar razor component back in Visual Studio. Add another new item, healthbar.razor. This one is going to inherit from sandbox.ui.panel. Now we'll switch back over to hud.razor. We can delete this text as we don't need it anymore and replace it with healthbar. Let's go back to our healthbar.razor. And what we're going to do with this is create a fill bar that fills from the left to the right based on how much health the player has. And to do that, we're going to insert another element here with the class of fill. We're going to create a style sheet for this using the style tag. We're going to place the health bar at the bottom left of the screen. So we do that with an absolute position, bottom 100 pixels, left 100 pixels. Let's give it a width of maybe 400 pixels and a height of 40 pixels. And I'm going to give it a background color of black and just a little bit of padding. And now we're going to create a style for the fill bar. We're going to make this height 100 pixels or 100% rather a width of 75% background color of red. Let's press save and see how this looks in game. All right, that looks about right. Uh, so what's next is we're going to add a heart icon to the very left of this health bar. That way it is a clear indicator of, you know, that this means health. I went over to opengameart.org and I found this heart icon and I dropped it into a textures folder in our game's root directory, as you can see right here. All right, let's go back to Visual Studio and we're gonna add this heart icon to our health bar. So create a new div element with the class heart. Go up to our style sheet and give this heart some style. We're gonna give it an absolute position, a width, of 65 pixels, a height of 55 pixels, left negative 20 pixels, and top negative 10 pixels. I believe that'll be pretty close. We'll give it a background image to the icon that we just downloaded. And this path will be relative to your add-ons root directory. And a background size of 100%. Let's press save and see how this looks. Oh, perfect. And now we need the width of this health bar to match the health of the player. So I'm gonna go over to the pawn and when the pawn spawns, we're going to set the health to 100. And by default, in the template, whenever you press the left mouse button or the primary attack button, a ragdoll is thrown. We're also going to make it subtract 10 from the health. And now we're going to head back over to healthbar.razor. And we're going to include the sandbox namespace just to make this a little bit cleaner. Then we're going to open up a C sharp code block and we're going to create a function whose purpose is to return the health of the player. We're gonna call this get health. We can use game.localPawn to grab a reference to our player. If the player happens to be null, we'll simply return zero. Otherwise, we'll return the player.health, and of course we need to cast it to an integer as that is what the function expects to return. And now we need to override the build hash method to inform the UI system that the health may have changed and it should re-render. Check that over at build hash, current health is equal to get health, and then we will return current health get hash code. The hash code is simply a unique identifier for the current state of things. So if the health number changes, the hash code will be different, and the UI system will know that it needs to update. And now we're going to hook up the player's health to the fill bar. And to do this, we're going to use an inline style. The inline style is going to have a width property. And we're going to reference the get health function with the at symbol between parentheses 
And of course we are percentage based, so we're gonna put a percent sign at the end of it. Because the player has a maximum health of 100, if the player is down to 75 out of 100 health, then his health is 75% full. And this translates perfectly to the width of our fill bar. So let's press save and see how this looks in game. Okay, we have a full health bar. Then I will press the left mouse button to spawn a ragdoll and we should see a drop. Perfect. And the last thing I wanna do is just style this health bar up a little bit so it doesn't look so bland. We're gonna start with a border radius of 20 pixels. And we're also gonna apply this to the fill bar. We're going to give the fill bar a gradient instead of a solid color. So this is going to be background image linear gradient. Direction to bottom from red to pink. And we're also going to give the fill bar a transition so it smoothly interpolates to its new value. Let's press save and see how this is looking. Ah, oh, that's much better. That wraps up this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, the comment section is open. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.